one. It just, as a Texan in particular, we've seen uh, the league start to recognize Juneteenth more, teams celebrating, the league celebrating it. You know, a lot of us growing up didn't really learn about it. As somebody from Texas and a black man, what does it mean to you that this is becoming more recognized? I mean, I think it's, it's really important. I mean, I definitely think it should be a national holiday. You know what I mean? Um, I think as as a nation, I mean, we got to we gotta tell the truth. You know what I mean? I think um, for us, especially down south, you know what I mean? That was a big time for us as black, black people. So um, I've always... I mean, I've always celebrated. It's my mom and my brother's birthday, um, but we always had big parades in my hometown, and I mean, they always kind of gave it the attention it deserved. So, for me, you know, what I mean, it's been really special, and it's kind of cool, you know, what I mean, that people are finally getting on the wave and understanding like what it really means to us as Black people. So, um, I really think it should be a national holiday, and I mean, tell the truth, let people know, you know, what I mean, that's when we were really freed, and that's when we were really able, you know, what I mean, to have the rights that other people had. So. Um, I definitely think um, it's very important. Thank you. Jim Mueller. Shifting back to football, Quandre, you're a veteran. You've been around the league a long time. But what is having these workouts and these practices do just to kind of help everybody come together? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's also dope. You know what I mean? You get to see the guys that – I mean, you get to see how guys are put in work this offseason. You know what I mean? You come back. And you can see guys are slim. You see guys have been working their tail off. And you can tell, you know what I mean, that guys have been putting their work in and not been BSing with the time. So we can ask for all this time off, but you got to be getting your work in while you're doing it. And I think that's what's the most important thing for me. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm year seven, you know what I mean? So for me, running around in T-shirts and helmet, I mean, it's, it is what it is. You know what I mean? You guys know, like, I like to play physical. I like to do all that and go get interceptions. But at this time, you can't do that. So. For me, it's just getting around the guys, the guys understanding my leadership and, you know, seeing what type of shape guys are in. So um, I think that's what's the most important thing for me in this time. Corbin. Hey, Quandre, you and I actually kind of talked about this a little bit on social media, but Pro Football Focus did not include you in the top 32 safeties for this year. And I guess my big question for you is, what do you think is the biggest misconception that some of these outlets have when they're evaluating the safety position as far as your responsibilities and the job at the position? I mean, I think when the media get behind certain guys um, and start telling these, these, I wouldn't say lies, but start feeding this crap about, you know, guys being playmakers, guys doing this. And, you know, I mean, the media get, when you get the media back, and I mean, I've been in Detroit, I mean, so of course I wasn't going to get hella media out there. And, you know, I come to a great team here and I have some success and, you know, I become a pro bowler. and. You know, my, my companion to the next side of me is all pro. And, of course, he's going to get the attention. He's a superstar. You know what I mean? So, um, and I'm fine with that. I mean, me and him, our relationship super tight. But if you get the media back and behind you, I mean, you can go out there and miss tackles. And you can go out there and give up deep balls. And, you know what I mean, they're still going to qualify, qualify you as one of the better safeties in the league. You know what I mean? So, um, all I know is I go out. Nobody runs the alley like me. Nobody makes go creates turnovers and things like I do. I mean, it's been, I think you said it the other day, I think it might be four of the guys with more interceptions than me in the last three or four years. So um, I think I'm doing pretty well on my end. So, um, I mean, I don't, I don't hate on guys, but I watch, I watch everybody's favorite players around the league and I know who's the better safeties in the league. Greg Bell. Hello, sir. What's your level of care that your partner in safety is not in camp here? Zero. I mean, I know what he's doing. I mean, I know he's working. I know he's getting the best shape, and I know he's going to be ready to go when he get here. You know what I mean? Um, that's my brother, and I'm going to support him regardless. And um, I know the type of person he is. I know he has no selfishness about him or anything like that. It's, it's you know what I mean? Um, it, it, it's, it's, getting worked, it's getting worked out, and things are going to be worked out, and he'll be here. You know what I mean? So um, I don't have any concern. I talk to him every day, so um, no concern on my end. Joe? You, I'm sorry, do you expect him the beginning of training camp? I mean, I can't speak for another man. I mean, you know what I mean? You guys will see when training camp get here. How y'all know I'm going to be here for training camp? You don't know. You know what I mean? You don't know if Pete going to be here for training camp? We all might not come the first day. What about that? All right, I'll miss that too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Fan. Uh, hey, Quandre, how important is it to be a leader with a young cornerback group? Um, and then what do you – I know it's earlier in shorts and t-shirts, but what, what do you make of, of the guys you have at that spot? I mean, 
I mean, it's dope. I mean, I'm the old head in the room, you know what I mean? I'm year seven, but I mean, I feel like I've been an old soul my whole life anyway, so ain't nothing changed for me. Um, but I mean, Joe, I only been here Thursday, Friday, and today, so you know what I mean? I don't know what guys been doing all the time, you know what I mean? So I, I like guys' attention to detail. Um, I like the guys to come out here competing, and even though we can't intercept and break passes up and things like that, I just love that, you know what I mean? Guys are here, they're doing what they're supposed to do, and um, I think we got a fun group, and I, I think it'll be real good for us. Is your leadership style more of, I'm always here if you need me, or more proactive than that? Of like, hey, if I see something, I'm going to tell you and, and be kind of in your ear about it. Oh, I'm a little bit of both, you know what I mean? Um, I think my teammates can contest this. I'm probably like the jokester leader, you know what I mean? Like. I'm a cap a joke. Like if somebody get burned, I'm a try to teach him, but I'm like, you got you got toasted right there. I'm gonna let you know, you know what I mean? But um, it's all in love, and I mean, as you get to know me, you know, like it ain't no, it's not really seriousness behind it. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm just trying to get my point across in the way that I think is the best way uh, for me to get it across. Michael Sean. Hey, what's up, Quandre? How's it going? Good, good. You all right? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, is, there, is there a sense among everyone else in the locker room, too, that they kind of understand what Jamal is doing and how he's handling the business side of the game right now? I mean, how y'all know is a business aspect to it. I mean, you know what I mean? We don't know what's going on. I mean, I do, but how do you guys know? You know what I mean? So, I mean, just let, I feel like we should just got to let everything play out. You know what I mean? Everybody's situation is different. His situation is different than mine, and my situation is different than his, and it's so on down the road. You know what I mean? So, um, just let it play out. And, I mean, like I said, I support my brother. I mean, he's going to be, he's going to be, I mean, every year he's top, top two, top three safeties in the league. So, for him, I know he's putting in that work, and um, we talk. Like I said, we talk every day. Everything will be smooth. Uh, when you were when you were watching Puna uh, when he was at Texas, uh, did, he, did he stand out to you? And if so, why? I mean, he stood out as a young guy. You know what I mean? The way he worked, his work ethic. Um, he was one of my favorite freshmen, I mean, all the time. You can ask him. I always mess with him. When I was a senior, he was a freshman. I always mess with him because I seen, like, the super long arms, and he had those, like, under under underdog mentalities, you know what I mean? The, he's 5'10", 5'11", playing D tackle, and everybody doubted him. He didn't have the big offers, and he was committed to Louisville. Coach Strong left Louisville. He committed to Texas. So, like, I always appreciate that about him, that he came and he worked and he did what he was supposed to do. Thank you. Masvida. Quandre, I'm wondering if you could talk – you keep talking about year seven. I'm more – we're going to talk about from what does year seven mean for you on and off the I would say I would say for me year seven I mean I know a lot of guys say this like I heard Chris Paul say like I'm not even supposed to be here Chris Paul was top five pick you know what I mean me I was round six pick 200 you know what I mean I wasn't supposed to be a pro bowler I mean I wasn't supposed to be going on year seven in the league um you know what I mean I wasn't supposed to be starting for the Seattle Seahawks knowing that the history of the defensive back room here, you know what I mean? So for me, it's different than a lot of guys, you know what I mean? Like my brother was the fifth pick and I was picked 200. So for me, it's a milestone in my own right, you know what I mean? So I'm going I'm to always throw that out there, you know what I mean? I'm always going to throw out stuff like that. But I mean, it's an accomplishment and I'm blessed, you know what I mean? But I want even more. So um, for me, I think it's always just like I want to work and I want to get to be the best player I can be. And, Going into year seven, I'm in my prime, so um, I just want to be the best player I can be, and I want this to be my best year yet. Bob? And, and have, uh, yeah, Quandre, uh, just curious your thoughts on um, the vaccine and if you think there's any reluctance among players or if you think it's going to be, be easy for the team, for the NFL to sort of achieve the numbers that they want to achieve for everything to go smoothly the way they want it to during the regular season. I mean, to each his own, you know what I mean? I'm not getting in any politics, anything like that. You know what I mean? Whatever guys choose to do, that's what they do. Um, I'm not here to be political. I'm not into that. So if you want to get the vaccine, get it. If you don't, you don't. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter to me. I mean, as long as you protecting me and my family and I'm protecting me and my family, I mean, that's all I care about. Last question, Art. Um, just to follow up, Andre, did you get the vaccine? And if so, why? 
I mean, all right, I mean, that's my business. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't go around asking people did they get the vaccine or did they not get the vaccine. I mean, that's not, I mean, that's not for the world to know. The world knows all my contracts and stuff like that. So um, hopefully I keep some secret about my life. But, I mean, that's, that, I think that's just me and my family and my team decisions. Quandre, thank you. Yep, no doubt. Coach Carroll's up. Yep.